guys, welcome to another episode of the Nocturnal Movie Club. If I sound muffled, I apologize in advance. I am on location. I can't tell you where, but that's all I can tell you. Very <laughs> secret agent OJ. Just very all secret way to agent. the rescue. I know. <laughs> um, WandaVision episode three is what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so from the end of episode two, Wanda is now pregnant. We've jumped into the new decade of the 70s. Everyone around them is oblivious to that fact, however. And Wanda and Vision are now trying to figure out what are they going to do with this new baby? When is this baby going to come? And we find out the baby is coming way faster than expected. We've got a doctor come in and he says, well, you're probably four months in when it's only been maybe four or five minutes. (laughs) It hasn't been that long. And slowly we start to see my favorite part of the show, the universe beginning to unravel. Uh, It's been four months. Time is flying at an extreme rate. Vision walks the doctor out and his neighbor goes from cutting the hedges into cutting through the fence, completely oblivious to what's going on. Uh, He goes back in and this reality starts to continue to unfold. The stork comes to life and You know, I think we were talking about a little bit earlier about how we think Wanda may not be controlling this universe. I'll play devil's advocate because I think she is. As she's pregnant and she's starting to lose control of, as a pregnant woman does, kind of her own body. um, As things are starting to go, she gets mood swings. She gets uh, hunger uh, in different ways, different cravings. She's starting to slowly lose a handle on this reality she's controlling. There's a moment where Vision sort of snaps out of it and he starts to mention uh, the Hart family about the choking scene from episode one. Uh, she, she starts to mention that the neighbors are acting really funny and things may not be going. And then without any cue whatsoever, Wanda just resets it, replays the scene completely. It's going down. Finally, the action has kicked up a little bit. Um, we're finally in color. Lots of gems dropped in this episode. Uh, Jake, let's start with you. Yeah, I definitely agree. We are in much... I would say bigger territory now with episode three and watching this, like, cause I was thinking, cause I saw a lot of people reviewing the first three episodes and we only got the first two. And, you know, a lot of that is due to, you know, if you release weekly, you have more press, like people will be talking about the show more often, but I can see why they held off on the third episode for us now, because they really wanted to get us talking and then throw in the very surprise at the end that we were building up to about how this is all taking place in like a, an alternate reality. Like, cause now we see the world in which the MCU is taking place in finally. And so, yeah, along with that, the aesthetics, like I'm really impressed with how well they're replicating the camera movement and color palette of the sitcoms, like the Brady Bunch. That's the vibe I yeah. got watching this one. I'm like, it's the one where Greg and Marsha fill in the blank. Um, so yeah, that's where I stand. I really liked this episode. To me, like it felt like even though it seems like they're going to be doing a new sitcom each week, it kind of feels like now it's starting to take shape. Yeah, and I definitely think of all the things Marvel is doing right now with this show, the one thing you definitely cannot fault them for is the attention to detail. I think the last TV show I saw with this amount of great 70s set pieces and just perfectly time perioded wise to that era was Mad Men. And that's almost a decade ago now. So to think back that they've actually got this so clean, so precise, and so nice looking, even the cheap sets. Well, I mean, but also depends, like, very what 70s. Era the, Great. also depends on like what era of the 70s, where you were in the 70s. Because you think yeah. about a show like The Deuce on HBO, which is New York 70s, which is a very different aesthetic than yeah. like California 70s. So all like all that plays in the factor too, which I think is cool. And it's pretty awesome to see that, to be honest. The sitcom thing, though, I do think is starting to to wear a little dry. I think it's starting to get a little tired. I think in the beginning as a framing device, it was really fresh. It was really cool. But now I'm starting to think, well, every week we're going to get 15 minutes of a sitcom and five minutes of a good Marvel movie. But I'm kind of interested to hear what are your guys' takes on that? Because I am not seeing a lot of people on the same page with me as that, I feel. Well, the sitcom aspect is not going anywhere next week. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I mean, I kind of liked it, like from a TV appreciation perspective. Yeah. Like it felt like being back at St. Francis College and watching episodes of classic shows just to get an idea of how TV progressed. But that's cool. I I love that part of it. But it's just that like, I feel like when you at the end of the at the end of the season, when we go back and we look at it, I feel like I'm going to fault it for using this framing device improperly. 
and inconsistently in some ways because you get it in the beginning, you don't get it at the end, you know, with the TV series. Uh, I feel like over an eight or a 10 episode arc, you should be using it in the first two episodes and the last two episodes maybe, or to close off the first arc, meaning the first three episodes. It's kind of weird to see how it's going to go. So next week we're getting, I think, more like a, a Roseanne vibe. Uh, from what I'm, from what I'm hearing. Wait, wait, what kind of vibe? Roseanne. Roseanne. Are we skipping a decade? Oh, she's nineties. Yep. Oh, oh. sorry. Fam- is it family ties. Family ties is eighties. I'm family pretty ties. sure, or at least heard- very late nine seventies. Yeah. yeah, I heard it's either family ties or Roseanne. But I also heard next week we're getting a lot of like real world MCU stuff, like what's going on with Sword and kind of how that happened i heard there's a rumor that we might get some of that background play of like the surrounding area of the bubble which would be cool because like there's a lot of questions i think i think we need answered and they've already sort of burst that bubble in in so many ways right they've kind of already let the cat out of the bag saying yep for sure this is all an illusion of some kind there is another reality going on here so they can't just tease it and just let it go they're gonna have to add to it and lots of questions with each tease, though, like I felt like they did a really good job of like giving just enough information. Like this week, like was everything that we needed. Like it yes. confirmed to us that we're in an alternate reality. But who's making this reality? That's where I think the next mystery is going to be. I don't think it's Wanda. I don't think. I think that was like the 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 spell they're in. Like I think it's some kind of spell that they're trapped under. That I think like if you start to notice, you like zap back in. I think when Wanda said no, because there was a difference, right? Remember when Wanda said no to the beekeeper and they like rewound it? That was yeah. Wanda. Yeah. But it was a difference versus when he said it and it wasn't like the rewind effect. It was a different effect right. versus like he broke the, the spell a little bit and then I think it automatically reset. So that part, that's why I don't think it was Wanda. Also, you notice from the trailer, the bubble had that bubble had a lot of red energy. But when it was mm-hmm. like when we saw it in the episode, that red energy was gone. Right. So I think later, I think Lana wanted to gain control of that later. But right now, I don't think it's under her control. Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I actually had to rewind uh, Disney Plus a little bit like myself to make sure that that wasn't a glitch. Because I was like, <laughs> this was a rewind. They didn't show the, the rewinding function. Right. It was just a snap, clean cut. Another sweet moment for the show, which is like touched by my, on my strings, was um, I was a twin. And I was like, oh, Pietro. <laughs> It's like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you, because people, I think people have forgotten about Pietro, which yep. is crazy to me, such an iconic character. So just to get that a little bit of a nod to him and hopefully who knows if he might pop up or not, we'll see. And a little bit of fourth wall breaking. I love that. As soon as you finish episode three, the first thing Disney plus recommends is Age of Ultron. I, <laughs> just, I'm glad just you saw that too. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people pointing that one out and it's true. A lot of people have forgotten about it. And I think canonically, this is the first time he's been mentioned again in the Marvel Universe. Um, really? He, he hasn't he been might, mentioned anywhere else? He might have been mentioned, if anywhere, I think episode one. But I don't think he's come back up in this in this kind of a way, especially towards the end of the episode with what Monica Rambo says about him. I don't think he's ever come back up. Yeah, no, they have not said the name Pietro at right. all. Like the name has not been said. Right. That that that's exactly right. That's that was my thinking when he said that. I was like, this sounds interesting. And even here in Ultron, that's something we've pretty much been completely silent on since probably the third Avengers film, maybe or Civil War. Couldn't remember the last time he even came up. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of interesting how it's starting to tie back in all these different pieces, bringing it somewhere new. Also, also like, what's going on with Geraldine? Like, like does she have? Because you know, in the comics, Geraldine slash Monica Rambeau, who we know her to be. Right. She's 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 been Captain Marvel. She's been has she's been Photon. So like, does she have her powers yet? That's another big question. Like, how is she able to break the mold already? And like, you know, and then she also wanted to toss her out of the the bubble, and she like, and and that was not like a light toss. You know, she survived. I don't think she has her powers yet, but you know, I don't have any reasons to say why she does or doesn't. I felt as if she if she would have had power, she may have fought Wanda back in that moment. But then again, she was just realizing she was in an illusion the entire time. The moment she hears Pietro's name, all of a sudden, the pieces start to click together and she's like, oh, wait, this is the guy who was killed by Ultron. And if that's something that happened in a reality that's not this one, where am I? 
It's like when you realize you're in a dream and you're dreaming. Uh, so I don't think she's got powers, but I do think as an impact of being in this universe, she's going to get those powers. I mean, the same question, I would even throw it back to you, OJ or Jake, about Agatha, about do you think she has her powers now? And and for those who don't know who Agatha is, that's the funny neighbor who likes to make jokes about her husband. Because uh, she's definitely going to be playing a bigger role. The question is, does she have powers now or will she be developing them? Uh, I think Monica. Agatha definitely has her powers. I think she's one of the people in control of what's going on. Clearly, mm. even when the way she like told, she the way she questioned Vision about Geraldine, I think Agatha very much is a major player here and yeah. is, knows exactly what's happening. I'm kind of yeah. curious to see how that goes because... I, I still don't, I don't know who's controlling this universe whatsoever. And I probably can't take a good enough guess, to be yeah. honest. Because with um, with Wanda throwing her out of the uh, the realm, part of me thinks that it's Wanda, but that's what I'm saying. Like, right. there's just a little bit to give you answers, but also keep the intrigue afloat. So right. we know someone's controlling this, but there are so many fingers that could be pointed here. Ooh, one thread I want to ask you guys about, because I'm curious to your opinion on, when Wanda's going through like the kicks and... Uh, just the general water breaking and the universe just starts to fall apart. When her water breaks, there's a thunderstorm in the house. When she feels a kick in the kitchen, all the appliances go haywire. Is that, do you think I think Wanda is doing that or is that something else? Because I saw that and I thought, oh, um, Wanda's experiencing something out of her control. Perhaps it's her losing control over this own universe she's created. She can't maintain the illusion much longer. But what do you guys think about that? That could be possible. I, I, that's what I was thinking when I was watching it, that it was her, but she wasn't right. able to control that. Oh, yeah, I think it was definitely her, but also, like, the twins, you know, who she's birthing, they also have powers. So I think a part of it was their powers, and they're obviously growing at an unnatural rate because Feige's trying to right. age them up for Young Avengers. Um, I think a part of it was, like, uh, Wiccan's powers, who's, who's as strong as one, if not more powerful. So, yeah, her two twins, uh, we should talk about that. Because so, in this episode, she she's pregnant. They're, they're growing at a super fast rate, and she has them all in the same episode. So from inception to birth in one episode, they're twins, they're two boys, um, and they're Speed and Wiccan. And that's who they're going to be. But can you explain what their powers are? What are their powers going to be? They're basically Wanda and Pietro reincarnated, but way cooler and have a bigger <laughs> fan base. Uh, both LGBT characters, which is amazing. Especially oh, okay. Wiccan. Wiccan's a huge fan base. He ultimately marries Hulkling in the comics. They have a huge big gay wedding, which is amazing. And um, the you know, they're staples for the young Avengers, they're founding members. So they're they're big characters that we're gonna see later on for sure with Haley Steinfeld, Kate Bishop, Kamala Khan, um, you know, uh, Cassie Lang from Ant Man Three. So it's gonna the young Avengers are coming. I don't know if they're coming in Disney Plus form or movie form yet, but they are on the way. Interesting. It's interesting to see how, do you guys think the kids are having an impact on the universe as of now? Um, even, you know, they obviously can't be controlling it cognizantly, right? But do you think just the fact that they're super powered individuals, do you think they're having any impact now? Or is it just Wanda losing control? Right now, I think it's Wanda losing control, but there's always a possibility. That's, it's like enough is shown where, you know, you clearly see something's happening, but it's hard to tell who's doing it. I, I'm good. probably repeating myself before, so I apologize. Yeah. But it's okay because I honestly think one of the most interesting things about this episode is that we've never seen someone with superpowers being born in the Marvel universe. I think every single hero up to date has been given the powers. No one has been born with powers as of now, hmm. with Thor being the exception because his universe is a bit different. Yeah, but I mean, we didn't see uh, Thor's birth. Like We didn't see Thor's like, birth. Universe. Right. Um, so it's a lot of firsts for the Marvel Universe in that respect. So we don't know what to expect or how things could be playing out there. Yeah. You know, that's the funny thing is, too, I was thinking back to when we were discussing last week and all the, the Easter eggs that we can find in these episodes. And I was like hyper focused with this one i was like let me see if i can find as many easter eggs as i possibly could yeah and the only thing i could find was the um the hydra soap uh, commercial Ooh, you want to talk more about that one because i've got a comment on that one too yes let's do so so our commercial this week was for hydra soap blue cube reminds me of something else like a tesseract uh I, and one thing I've kind of noticed is that I've seen some people drawing the parallel between the commercials we're getting each week to one of the Infinity Stones. Uh, 
uh, the different color and the different kind of commercial may play back to one of the stones. Like, I think the simplest one is episode two, where you have the wa the watch and you, do you have the infinity stone for time? In the first episode, it's red. It could be the infinity stone for, I forgot what it's called, but I think it's illusion. And with space, the one for uh, the infinity stone for space is blue. And then we get one here that's blue. And it's all about transporting yourself from your hectic household housewife domesticated lifestyle to a spa paradise that's somewhere else which is what the blue infinity stone is meant to do um i, I don't know if that's the that connection <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly didn't make the connection myself but i've been looking to see what other people have been saying some people have really good takes some people have really terrible takes but that's a good one um i'm curious to see if that's going to continue um i've also been curious i haven't even checked to see how many episodes wandavision is going to be um i don't know what the run is going to be didn't they say like maybe nine or 10 episodes? Uh, it looks like there'll be nine episodes. Right. So if they try to continue that trend of one infinity stone per episode, it's not going to work. There's only six. And I know in the alternate universes, there's only eight. I have a prediction. The next one of the next to come episodes, like it's going to be the nineties and they're going to okay. do one for the mind stone. It's going to be the, it's your brain on drugs. Ooh, I would love, love, love to see that. Right. That would be that incredible. Be perfectly fitting. Oh, the war on drugs has got the most iconic commercials of that era, <laughs> comedic or otherwise. They're incredible. So that'd be really interesting to see. Are there any other companies like besides Stark and who we might pop up, you think, with a commercial? I, I was trying to think who else we might pop up and see. Like, uh, what other brands are there? I couldn't think of anything. I mean, even I don't know if any will ever come up again because even here's one I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, you know, when they were doing the painting scene when Wanda was using the paintbrushes to paint the nursery room? Yeah. Um, the name on the paint, Simser, I thought it said Sinister at first, but it says Simser. Simser is the storyboard artist on the show. So they're just naming some of the companies now after the cast and crew, which I always love. But I'm not sure what other uh, what other companies can appear. And they Maybe might Osborne? Ooh, right. Someone with the 200 IQ thoughts there. That is incredible. It could be Osborne <laughs> there, um, especially when you get to the 90s or early 2000s um, in the sitcom era. We could probably see something like that. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Something like the 90s. It's going to be like Friends or something. Or I really else. would love to see a Friends episode. <laughs> This show, that's the one I'm waiting for. S Friends or Seinfeld? If they can do either of those two, perfect show. Ten out of ten. Part of me thinks like part of it will be Full House as well, just because you got an Olsen in there. You've got an Olsen. It makes sense. Uh, I would love to see two of her in that as well. <laughs> that would be a great. Maybe, maybe the it. twins will uh, play a part in that. <laughs> I heard we're maybe. definitely getting a Sabrina Teenage Witch reference as well, which is like cool. You know, because she's a witch. Blah blah blah. Right. That makes sense, especially with, you know, the fact that they did an episode that was very closely related to Bewitched. Um, or sorry, I Dream of Genie. I made a mistake. Um, so, Bewitched as well. Yeah, it could be as well. Um, I, yeah, both both really. Um, so it would be really interesting to see that too. Either way, we're looking forward to episode four, guys. This concludes another fantastic episode of the Nocturnal Movie Club. I can't wait for you all to join us on the next one. And that's it. Cool. Tune in next week. See you next week, episode four is going to go down. I'm predicting a lot of action. Episode four is going to be a very interesting one. I'm really excited to talk about that. Oh, this yeah. has really been just like the big preamble, the big lead up to the yeah, exactly. The whole we got thing. I think all the stories out the way, and now it's time for some exactly some action. Finally, yeah. finally. But until you do, real. try out Hydra soap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bye, guys. All right, OJ. Catch you guys later.